So now we wanna understand the relationship between models because of foreign keys. And we're gonna do that by using test.py. So we'll have a few examples of how these relationships work through test.py. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. First off, we're gonna import from django.contrib.auth. We're gonna import the git user model so we can actually use the user model. So user equals to git user model, just like that. And you may recall that in models.py, this is how we reference the user model. It's just a reference and everywhere else. If we need to use the actual user model, this is how we do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our, let's do a user test case. Now I'm actually not gonna use this one in the long run in here at least. I'm gonna just show you how to actually set up some of this data. So we create the test case, we call setup. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and do user.objects.create underscore user. Now, this is a custom model manager method that only the user class has, uh, at least the built-in one. And so we do CFE, as in the username, and then some sort of password, ABC123. Okay, in this setup process, what I can do is I can also set a variable to the test instance itself so I can reference self.user A elsewhere. And so it does this without doing an additional lookup. So let's define test user PW, we'll take in self. And all I wanna do here is say checked equals to self.user dash underscore A dot check underscore password and just check ABC one, two, three. So we just wanna make sure that that's true, which it should be, but we'll go ahead and do self.assert true of that. Now you might notice that this is a really bad password, but it still should test it, right? So python manage.py and test recipes, we hit enter, and sure enough, it's still working. It does run that one test. So as you notice, calling something like this isn't necessarily gonna do that validation which is a whole nother thing that I would probably wanna test at some point in the future. But for now that we have this user test case, we can probably feel good that this is done and we don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it. So let's go ahead and do a class recipe test case now. And test case. So yet again, I'm gonna be setting up a user here. And you might be wondering, you know, test user count, something like this. Like what is the user count? Is it user.objects.all? And then we'll do self.assert equal qs.count. You might be like, oh, it should be two, right? Like we created one here and here. So let's give it a shot and run it again. No, it's just one. So these setup methods are definitely isolated to the single test case. That's just another example of that. Okay. So now I, of course, want to actually test out the recipes themselves. So let's go ahead and import them. So from models, we're going to import recipe ingredient and the recipe. Okay, so before I test anything, let's go ahead and test the user recipe count. Okay, so the user recipe, individual user, that's why I have this is to test that individual user. So this is the individual user and it has a foreign key just like this. So the reverse relationship would be equal to grabbing that user object, which of course we could say user equals to that to make things a little bit more clear. And then we can do dot recipe set dot all. So recipe set is literally the model name, right? Model name and then underscore set. So underscore set will give me a query set. And now I can go ahead and say self.assert equal qs.count being zero, right? So let's go ahead and run it again. And sure enough, we've got nothing. So what I actually wanna do is test user recipe reverse count. So this is a reverse relationship. That's actually how they all work. We will do this a couple more times. Before we do, let's go ahead and actually create a recipe now. So self.recipe a equals to recipe.objects.create. What are the things we need in here? I think we need a name. Let's go ahead and look at what the required fields are. User is one of them. 
Name is another one. And that looks like it. So username. Okay. So the name, we'll go ahead and just call this, you know, grilled chicken. And then the user is going to be equal to self.user A. And we'll do right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this now. We test it out. And now I get a failure. It's giving me the failure in test user recipe reverse count. Now, of course, this is failing because this is a actual query set of these objects. So I can actually print out what that query set is. And of course, I have at least one. So that means that I have one in here. So if we run this again, it should give me the valid answer, like no errors here. But then I also see that this is a recipe query set. So what's actually happening here is we'll go ahead and test the user recipe forward count. I'll call it forward. And this time, instead of writing this query set out, we're going to go ahead and grab it directly from the recipe itself. So recipe.objects.filter user equals to the testing user right here. All right, so we save that. And now if I run it again, same for, I get the exact same query set that's coming through on both of these. And this could also be tested by running yet another recipe. And so I'll go ahead and say, this time instead of grilled chicken, I'll just say grilled chicken tacos, right? So now I actually have two recipes that are associated to that user. So if I run this again, I should have two errors. And sure enough, I do. And I could also see what's printed out by scrolling up a bit. Now I have literally the exact same recipe objects. So reverse relationships are great. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and declare them in here. Okay, cool. So now the next part of this would be how do I actually create a recipe ingredient? Okay, so now I'll just go ahead and say self dot recipe ingredient a equals to, well, we want the recipe ingredient. Let's go ahead and check out what the requirements are. So objects dot create. I think name is one of them and I'll say chicken and I think quantity is one of them. And this is going to be half a pound, which means that I need to pass in unit as well. So pound. Okay. So let's go ahead and look back in the recipe ingredient. Oh, recipe itself is required. So we've got name, quantity, unit. Cool. So. Let's go ahead and add it into recipe A and set it equal to recipe. Now I want to check recipes A's, how many actual ingredients it has. So again, another reverse. This time we're going to just copy the original one. And so now it's recipe reverse, re recipe and ingredient reverse count. So this time, of course, it's not the user. Instead, it's going to be recipe A. So recipe is equal to the recipe A. Now the reverse count. How do we get the reverse relationship here? Well, again, it's going to be recipe itself. This time, instead of recipe underscore set, it's recipe ingredient set dot all. And this time, of course, it's going to be one. So we save that. And let's run a test again. Now we should have all successful tests. Ah, but we got an uh, invalid one. Looks like maybe quantity was spelled incorrectly. Oops. So Python manage.py, make migrations. And we're going to rename it. It's asking us to rename it. We say yes, Python manage.py, migrate. Quantity. This is why we write tests. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it again. And sure enough, We've got all of them working, right? So we've got our forward relationship and a backward relationship. And of course, to get that backward relationship, we can do something like this. Okay, no longer a reverse count. We're going to go ahead and use that recipe still. And this time, we're going to use recipe ingredient dot objects dot filter recipe equals to recipe. Okay, and we can write it again. 
Now, something you might be wondering is, can we check how many recipe ingredients are related to our specific user? So let's go ahead and test, let's say user to level relation. And the idea here is how do we actually test the recipe ingredient, the query set that's related to the user. So user again being self.user A. And so this time we can actually filter with two underscores to the user based off of that, All right? So we're actually able to grab all of the recipe ingredients that are related to this user. And so again, we only have one recipe ingredient on our entire system, so or at least in this test. So again, we're gonna go ahead and assert equal count is one, All right? And so let's go ahead and run that again. And sure enough, it should give us all valid. So this is one way to grab it, but how do we actually grab that with the reverse? So a two level reverse relationship is not something you're gonna do very often, but let's go ahead and see what it would look like if you were to. So this being a reverse relationship. And of course we start with the user model. And what I wanna do is get this same query set. So one of the ways we could do it is by declaring something like IDs and say user.recipe set dot all and in this query set so this of course is going to be a recipe query set like this um, this query set itself we can actually do a method called values list and we can select any given field now i'm actually going to use an incorrect field to start just so you can see the error so i'm going to go ahead and use an incorrect field and i'll also pass in flat being true so what I'm actually trying to get here are the recipe ingredient IDs. So RI IDs, or let's actually just call it recipe ingredient IDs, just to be very explicit. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And what we'll see is not only an error, but it also tells me the choices that I can go into this, as in the choices I can use for any given value list. So this is actually really useful to uncover the reverse relationships themselves. So let's go ahead and now use the correct one, which was recipe ingredient. And now I'm gonna go ahead and save that and run it again. And in this case, what is it gonna give me? Well, um, it's now, oh, giving me QS. Let's actually print out what that ends up being. Um, and so I'll leave out, I'll just use this. And so I run this again and so um, what I get here is this query set. It's kind of a strange query set, but it is a query set nonetheless. And so what I can do then is take the fields that are in this related model. So again, we're gonna go ahead and use two underscores of ID. And that of course is gonna give me my IDs here. So we save that. Let's go ahead and run this this time. And this time it's gonna be something different. Again, it's still giving me an error here. And well, is it different? It's actually showing me two different IDs that are coming through. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more feature to this and just call this a list, okay? So that turns this query set into a list. And then what we can do here is go back to this restaurant or recipe ingredient objects. And now we can filter the ID in this recipe ingredients IDs list. Okay, so now we've got this query set here and hopefully now it's actually one. So let's go ahead and run that again. And sure enough, we get success. Okay, so yet again, if I actually change this to something like IDDD or I had an invalid error on that lookup, um, the system hopefully will tell me a bunch of different things here. Right. So what if I'd said ABC here? And yet again, it, it should give me some sort of output that's a little bit easier to distinguish. <laughs> Not always that easy because uh, that doesn't tell me a whole lot. Uh, but when you're doing these kinds of weird reverse relationships, you know, it doesn't always make sense. Right. Um, so this one definitely does not make sense. It makes a lot more sense to do this two level reverse relationship itself, right? And you can have more levels than this. Um, you can have three levels, you can have four levels, but as long as at the very top, there's a user somewhere, then it should work. In other words, if I actually had a model in here saying class recipe, uh, it may be recipe ingredient image, 
and this one did models.model and we had the, instead of the recipe being the foreign key, but rather the recipe ingredient being the foreign key, that would be a third level down. And we could totally use that to do something similar to this. I'm actually not gonna do it, but I will show you that it would be something like this. And now it'd be recipe ingredient again. So let's just grab this and then underscore underscore recipe, then underscore underscore user, and then our user. Right, so that would be three levels right there. But again, not something I'm gonna spend a lot of time doing. And it should show you that these reverse relationships can get, well, they can get a little complicated. Um, so we don't wanna make things too complicated for us. We wanna use things that we know for sure that we could use. And instead of this weird complicated mess, uh, another way we can think about this one right here is we'll go ahead and say two level uh, relation and then we'll say via recipes, okay? So now what I would do is say IDs equals to user dot recipe set dot all values list of ID flat being true. And then now we could use the same recipe here and then we can do recipe ID in these IDs. And that's you know just another way that we could go about solving some of these issues that you might come up with, right? Uh, but <laughs> it's really, really dependent on how complicated you're trying to make your system. And if this is complicated to you, no worries. We're not gonna be using these a whole lot. Maybe the two level one, but the things we're gonna be using a lot of are more like these up here, right? We're not gonna be spending time doing these crazy reverse relationships.